Welcome back. A few mailbag episodes ago, I purchased this five pack of 10 watt warm white LEDs from eBay for a price of $5.98 plus 260 shipping. And in a subsequent video, which was basically a comparison of cheap LEDs that were good cheap LEDs versus bad cheap LEDs, I showed you why you would probably want to spend a couple bucks extra and possibly get better ones. Although, as time goes by, it's harder and harder to find good LEDs. But anyway, we had this pack and I destroyed one for science. That's what this was, which left me obviously with four of them. And I said, well, one of those is going to be used in my overhead desk lamp. There is a 10 watt cool white LED in it currently, but I want to be able to switch between warm and cool. Now we have, well, three left, obviously. And then I said, well, I got to do something with those. I can obviously just keep them in the bag. But I said, there's some ideas I have. And I need, obviously, maybe a way to power them besides running them off of my power supply over here. Because maybe I'll want to put them into a lighting fixture. Well, obviously, you need something to convert AC to DC. And you also need something to drop the voltage. So to go from 120 volts here in the States down to uh, about 9 to 12 volts is what the range these things run off of. So off to eBay I went. And of course, I thought of this after I placed an order. But I ended up getting this package here. And this was shipped directly from China. And well, these are probably what you think they are. These are little mini power supplies that are meant to do exactly what I want. It takes regular 120 volt line voltage here converts it down to 12 volts here. And these are rated ex exactly for these 10 watt LEDs. And you could find these in all different configurations. They make them in waterproof little boxes. And then they make them in these just to open frame ones. And uh, well, the couple things I wanted to make with these, I figured these would be perfect. Now the kicker is I got these shipped 99 cents a piece. Yeah, including the shipping from China to the States. I was in shock. I wanted to make this purchase as cheap as possible. And like I said, I didn't need the waterproof ones. And besides the boxes for those were much larger. I wanted to make them as tiny as possible. Cause I mean, well, look, you got your LED, you got this little box. I mean, yeah, you need a heat sink for these LEDs. I have to I have to say that you, you definitely, definitely do. They will get way too hot. So you'll need some kind of a mating surface to screw this into or something to get the heat off of this thing. But. I figured, well, I got three LEDs, I'll get three power supplies. Well, one of the projects I want to do, um, which I actually have in the room here, but I'm not going to grab it right now because I want to kind of leave it as, in, as a bit of a surprise, is I want to retrofit these into another lighting fixture that uses standard lights. And there's actually two individual parts to this that you can switch independently. So I figured I would use two of these power supplies obviously and then that left me with a third set i have an idea for the third set uh, uh, another youtuber whose name is also chris who is also a subscriber to my channel the two of us have been chatting back and forth and uh we're going to do a collaboration video and the thing i'm going to convert is actually the same thing he's going to convert except his only has one unit and I didn't really plan that out right away I thought you know I would have extra stuff I didn't even think of these power supplies to be frank with you when I actually picked up the main LEDs here uh, that was again an afterthought but now that I have all this stuff it's kind of it's kind of become clear exactly what I'm going to do with this so when I do my video uh, for the conversion, what I'll actually do is, is and I have to figure out the logistics of this, but uh, I'll actually make a little video of me getting these things ready to go after we explain what we're gonna do. And Chris will get that video footage and somehow he's gonna edit that into his final video or whatever he's gonna do or maybe I'll do my conversion first. I'm not really sure of the logistics of that. All I know is, is they're gonna get packaged up and they're gonna get sent his way. And we're gonna, we're gonna work on the other ones in, in my little conversion. And I think that'd be a lot of fun for the two channels and that way you guys can get to see another creator's content on my channel and, and vice versa. So we'll be kind of sharing an audience, I, I, I can say. 
And I've been wanting to do a collaboration video for quite some time. Unfortunately, I'm a, I'm a small timer. I mean, I just celebrated uh, 1,200 subscribers the other day. I'm a small timer. And most of the guys I watch are 10,000, 50,000, 100,000, 500,000 subscribers. Some of them read like 2 million. And well, unfortunately, when you're a small timer, they don't really want to give you much of the time of day when it comes to doing collaboration videos. They'll help each other out but they don't want to help out the small guy. And well, Chris is another small guy just like I am. So we're going to do a collaboration together. And that'll be, again, a lot of fun. But way beyond topic for now, uh, I did want to take a look at these things. Now, I'm not going to do a teardown of them. Um, you know, if I wanted to do that, I would have had actually purchased a few more of them. I mean, it was $2.97 for the 3D ship from China. I mean, that was it. It's this little box. That's it's it blows my mind. You you cannot buy the components for that cheap. But nevertheless, you know, we could take a look at it. Now, I know a lot of people will say things like, well, what's the separation like on it? Well, when your circuit board's this small, there really isn't any separation at all. Um, I mean, they they have this little white trace in here to hopefully help with that. But it's uh you know, it's kind of minimal. There's no, there's no perforations in here. There's not like it's a big wide track. So safety wise, I'm not 100% sure how safe these things are going to be down the road. Uh, also, if you look like this whole uh, this little transformer over here, it's, it's a little wonky. You know, it's not like it's held down on all four sides here. It's just held on by the one side over here. And they actually have, it looks like a diode right here and a little ambiguous little control circuit is right underneath this thing so space is at a premium on this thing of course so that's to be expected and well there's little things like where the wire comes through over here you can see there's a little bit of the slack on there so that could possibly be pushed through or cleaned up or neatened up or you know whatever I mean we'll we'll definitely have to experiment with this thing and see but I mean for the most part it's not that bad uh, it is a little mini switch mode power supply I mean what do you expect and I'm, sh I'm assuming, I'm not 100% sure, but I am assuming this is actually uh, current regulated too. I mean, the bottom, we just have your standard capacitors and, and resistors and whatnot. There's not really a whole lot to see in the bottom. Interestingly, if you look at these traces right here, you can see they have like a little squiggle in it. I'm assuming they're using those as fuses possibly. You know, if there's too much current coming through here, it's gonna pop that little trace. That's what it would seem like initially to me. And this is a double-sided board, of course, so there is some traces on the other side of this here. But, I mean, that thing is absolutely tiny. I mean, if you compare it to my thumb, what's maybe, what, an inch by an inch? I don't have my ruler in front of me. I'm going to go grab that. It's right behind me on the counter over here because I'm curious how big these things really are. Yeah, actually, it is exactly one inch. One inch by one inch by about... I'd say less than three quarters of an inch. So that's going to fit very nicely into the enclosure I want. And they did the right thing. They put larger gauge wire on the input and smaller gauge wire on the output. Now, I don't have one of those quick test units. Uh, anyone who watches Big Clive's channel knows exactly what I'm talking about. But it's a handy little device you can just connect these wires right into. But what I can do is we can actually solder these wires to one of these LEDs. And I can just hack something on of these. I know that's not the safest way to do it, but we can we can get these powered up and for the sake of at least this video so we can see if there's any flicker in these LEDs because that's the important thing. I don't want the flicker. And we'll also maybe take a look at some of the isolation on this just to see if we're going to worry about getting mains voltage coming through the low voltage side over here. So let me just get that all set up. And as you can see, I soldered on the positive and the negative to the LED from the power supply. So that just leaves these two wires here. And well, I'm gonna do something that's very dodgy that I don't recommend you do. I'm gonna take the end of this wire here. And if we look at this, it's marked N for neutral, L for line. Line is gonna be the black wire. Neutral is gonna be the white wire. And I'm gonna take the end of the wire like this. I'm gonna bend the little lead over so it causes like a little spring action. And I'm gonna jam that right in there like that as far as I can go. And it should make contact in there. We'll do the same thing with the neutral over here. And well, obviously don't touch this because you can get shocked from it. We'll get that piece of solder out of the way and we'll plug this in and hopefully it doesn't go bang. 
and it lights. I don't see any. I don't see any any flicker. I mean, definitely not to the uh, to the naked eye. Well, that's bright. Oof. Yeah, but anyway, I don't see any flicker there. That's a good thing. Whew, yeah, it's smoking hot already. Yeah, so you can only plug those in for so long. Right. Well, that's a good sign. Um, I'm not going to touch that still because there could be some power dissipated on the other side of these capacitors. But let's see if I grab my multimeter over here. We'll put this into continuity mode and see. See if we can look at this here. First of all, obviously, we'll go between these two here. There's no continuity there, obviously. And going between line and neutral, there's nothing between positive and one of the pins here there's nothing nothing yeah well the least continuity wise there's no connection so that's a good sign hey you know what for a dollar that doesn't seem so bad well that was fun uh you can plug that in one more time and just see it comes on pretty quickly too so here it goes in lights right up yeah, I have to say that's pretty damn good. Well, not much more to add to this particular video, so you'll have to sit in suspense and see what we're going to actually work these into. And Chris, I know you're watching. I'll get in touch with you and uh, get your address. That's one thing I haven't gotten from you so far. And I'll get these off to you, and we'll uh, work on the logistics of how we're actually going to do the collaboration video. And well, guys, I want to thank you for watching. If you're not already a subscriber, please click subscribe. Check out my, my other channel, the PTS Extras channel, where I do other things that don't fit necessarily into the actual layout of this particular channel. And check out the other videos I have up on the screen. Thanks for watching.